Like, why? Because the amount of connections that we would need. And the more connections you use, the less water supply that's going to each plant. Uh -huh. It would have been and okay so, here, maybe, because each plant's so spread out. But over there, it's like you just need a straight, pretty much, hose anyway. Mm -hmm. And it would be hard to do two different systems. Okay. So we'd have to run two separate hoses off of it, and I don't know if the water it's Definitely not going to go very far, though. No, it's not. But this gardening project has been done. hard. Lots of shit's come up. Day one, after we put the plants and the seeds in the ground, I look outside, and Keaton's in the gardening bed digging where all the seeds were. So I yelled at him to get out, and then he just laid down in it in a, in a little fear boy that he is. And so got him out of there, and I tried to tell him no, and then of course a couple hours later I look out, same situation. So Kyle and I had to build a fence all the way around the garden. So that was kind of the first issue that arose. Gardening has been so adventurous this season. Some things have happened, which are, it's like exciting. The bad things are even exciting, if that makes sense. Um, that was a still for you right there. Um, because it's like we're learning all this new stuff. The radishes took off right away. They were the first things to sprout their little green things from the ground and they seem to be flourishing and like just loving life. Well, pulled them out and they were about this big. Some of them were about this big, just these gigantic radish. And I was like, oh, they loved it here so much. And then I bit into one. Surprise, surprise, it was the most disgusting thing I had ever bitten into. They were semi-hollow on the inside. So apparently, if you let radishes grow too long, they get too big. If you let them grow for too long of a period, they get too big and they don't stay full and they hollow out on the inside and they are no longer delicious and fun to eat. Chloe tied a bunch of like metallic streamers onto the, the fence we built all the way around to keep the birds away and we thought it was working and then the other morning I looked outside and there was definitely birds eating all the plants. So I don't know what they're afraid of. They're not afraid of Petey the Flamingo, that's for sure. I guess that's, maybe we should get scarecrows. <laughs> Our carrots never popped up. The carrots didn't pop up. The beets like started to um, pop up some leaves, but then I think it, that's one of the ones that got attacked by some bugs. So then after that, they like stopped growing as far as I can tell. So that was kind of disappointing because we were excited for those root vegetables. I really don't know what I'm doing when it comes to maintaining a garden, because all I've done is stuff on my balcony. All these things are so new to me, so I've been trying to absorb everything, and Ashley's been great, Acacia's been great, Chloe's been great, Chrissy's been great. I have learned so much from everyone. Unfortunately, we've run into a few little hiccups with our garden. Just as a reminder, we had one planter that had starter plants and one planter that were, we were growing from seeds. So in the planter from seeds, we put in a bunch of different seeds, assuming that some of the seeds wouldn't make it. And so unfortunately, some of the plants, like none of the seeds made it. So I don't know if it's the climate or if it wasn't watered enough or if it was overwatered or what, but some things just never popped up. And 
I really don't know why. One of the things we've talked about is that we put in a, a pretty big garden um, and it's at Chrissy's house so she was having to get up every day and hand water it so obviously that wasn't ideal and especially as hot and dry as it is here um, we need our garden getting a good steady flow of water. Of course it's in my backyard so it was up to me to be the person to go outside every single day and water all the shit. So we decided to go with the um, soaker hoses but you can also do a drip uh, where you'd have a, a long hose that you have to put like poke holes in and you can kind of set it up on each plant um, but because we have rows of seeds we decided that that would just uh, we it would take so much time to put put in the effort to do that so having the soaker hose it's just gonna lay out and the water just basically seeps out of it yeah. so Acacia helped with the setting up the watering. We essentially were trying to come up with the easiest and most economical solution for this and originally I was thinking that we would do a drip system but because the plants are already in the planters and how they are spread out and how we have kind of a zigzag going the amount of product essentially that we would have to put together is a lot and our seeds are in a row and so for a um, like a fountain drip system it essentially is just supposed to cover like one plant at a time and yeah. so the seeds are in a row and so the drip the um, drip <laughs> I can't wait to see her talking part of this <laughs> The soaker hose will actually just go along either side of the yeah. seeds and cover the ground. So we're gonna be It'll using- It'll still be efficient. Yeah, we're gonna be using a couple different soaker hoses so that because there's a gap in between the um, beds, so that water doesn't go in between. So we're gonna put, um, we're gonna do a, we got our little Y so we can have um, one of the hoses that's gonna go out to our garden for, we're gonna put some soaker hoses out, set them on a timer, that way Chrissy doesn't have to come out here every day and water. And as much as I don't mind doing it, like I have a lot going on, I'm really busy, and if I'm expected to be at the gym at eight, that means I was waking up a half an hour earlier to go outside and water, or I was trying to get it done at the end of the day, and so, I started to feel like I was kind of like left with the project, so to speak. And as much as I want to be able to say, I have no, I like, it's just time is something I'm very short on. And this is our timer, which I'm having a hard time opening. Um, had a lot of troubleshooting with that. Uh, we bought a really long one, put the whole thing in, staked it down, and there just wasn't enough um, water pressure uh, so that second end of the garden wasn't really getting any water so we ended up getting two separate hoses um, and splitting them off so that we could get water going to both gardens and water them at different times um, got a timer on them so now one one runs for a couple hours and then the other one runs for a couple hours um, so it's working pretty good uh, again it's really really dry and hot here so we're just trying to figure out how much water they need to survive We put drip hoses out and the first thing that happened was is apparently I was out of town um, but when they installed the drip hoses apparently the water wasn't getting all the way across everything so then we're installing splitters timers multiple hoses and then next thing you know there's two watering hoses going separate directions to water the seeds and water the plants and then I got my first water bill and it was three hundred dollars $300 for a water bill. Now everywhere else I've ever lived in the history of time, 
the water bill is like $30. So to see a $300 water bill, I'm like, I'm not gonna ask anybody to help pay for it. That seems wrong to me, I guess, maybe. I don't know. I don't know why I am the way that I am. Um, so the $300 water bill was definitely kind of like a big, holy shit. Um, so that was majorly unexpected. I know that you're supposed to water plants, but I didn't know anything about like pruning or what you're supposed to, like if you're using pesticides or s some alternative. I am making some homemade weed killer. This is vinegar, soap, <laughs> and salt. And um, it essentially just kills everything. The chemical reaction with the salt and the vinegar and then the sun. My Wendy will just kill them all. Gives it a nice vinegar. <laughs> so this is for the weeds? Yes. And then the salt is going to be for the slugs? Yes. Mashing them. I was like throwing them over the fence. Like they're just gonna come back. I was like, I know, but she just keeps smashing them, and I was like, okay. It's a snail sympathizer. Over here. So it's been a lot of troubleshooting. Um, we tried a few different organic sort of pesticide options that Acacia had come up with or that she's used in the past. And some seem to work, some may have kind of hurt the plants a little bit. So it kind of remains to be seen how much damage that did, but we used some neem oil spray, which is an organic pesticide, I think. And that was to help with aphids. So what are we looking at? Aphids, supposedly. We have noticed that we have a pretty bad pest bug problem. Uh, especially in the garden that we planted all of our seeds, um, just literally chowing down everything. Yeah, you can see these, um, all these holes right here. We've got bugs. Um, our spinach is com completely eaten down. Uh, so we don't know exactly what we have. So it's eating everything, holes in these plants as well. So they're everywhere, whatever it is. So we'll try to figure it out try a different couple solutions. We had a little hiccup with the beet seeds. Um, they all got eaten by some kind of bugs. Like the entire top, like the greens got bit. So I pulled them all out of the ground yesterday to see what had happened. And they literally just looked like the tiniest, littlest carrots that it could have ever been made, but beet colored. But I'm assuming because there was no greenage, and no leaves, that there was no way for it to photosynthesize. Sad and frustrating. Um, our beets and our uh, beets and the spinach spinach have just been chomped to the bit. Um, so we've tried some different um, bug sprays, which have helped a little bit. Dish soap and water, because we're gonna spray this directly onto the plant to kill um, aphids and any other type of bugs. And dish soap water plus some nice garden neem oil should take care of it hopefully any sort of surface any sort of material not paint or anything like it's great. things out of your carpet eggs, eggs and stuff? i think those okay. are eggs yeah those are their eggs Acacia had a home remedy for the bugs that I don't think it worked. It's a legit thing. I looked it up on the internet. Acacia's not crazy. <laughs> um, it's something that people do, but I don't know if it was like the dish soap in particular was too harsh or what, but we lost some of the Brussels sprout leaves and I don't know if that's gonna affect the rest of the growth of the plant. So, there's a, I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen. It's still, everything, Everything that's growing is still growing. Some things never started growing, but I think we're gonna start planting things in those spots and see if we can maybe get some things right the second time around. I don't know. <laughs> you know what that's growing real good though is the red cabbage. One of my favorite things in the whole world. I can eat red cabbage like an apple 
I mean, clearly that'd be hard to like hold the whole bowling ball thing up to your face, but I love just to like chew on it. It's so delicious. Those are taking off while the green, the leaves are. I haven't seen any cabbage heads growing yet. Huh, I don't know if that's problematic. I need to check the timelines on everything. Um, but those are really exciting. And then I'm mainly only excited for the stuff I like, everything else I could give a shit about. But everybody liked something different, so I know someone cares about it. 